Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the heart. In this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, cardiac muscle contraction. Okay, so um, the um, structure for this video is we're going to start by talking about the structure of a cardiomyocyte in a bit more detail. And we're going to find that this actually differs between an atrial cardiomyocyte, uh, i.e. a cardiomyocyte from either the right or the left atrium, uh, and a ventricular cardiomyocyte, i.e. one from the left or the right ventricle. Okay, specifically, uh, atrial myocardiocytes aren't actually going to have T-tubules, and that's going to affect their contraction quite a bit. Okay, uh, we're then going to talk about the excitation contraction coupling. So we're not going to go through the cardiac action potential. We'll just say, okay, the cardiac action potential leads to depolarization, and then uh, that causes the activation of this channel, etc., etc. Um, we um, we can't go through the cardiac action potential because it would just take too long. The video will get too long if we did that. So we'll look at. Um, excitation contraction coupling, we'll look at how we get calcium-induced calcium release from the type 2 ryanodine receptors, we'll then look at how that leads to contraction of the cardiomyocyte, uh, and we'll then see how the cardiomyocyte relaxes. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, the structure of a cardiomyocyte. So let's say we have our cardiomyocyte here. So, before I do anything else, but so this is the... Um, this is one of the edges of the cardiomyocyte. Before I do anything else, I need to tell you that the membrane of the cardiomyocyte is not just a flat thing. I'm not going to draw it like this. Instead, it has a load of deep invaginations into it. Okay? So you go along, and then you'll have another one of these deep invaginations. And these deep invaginations into the, um, into the cytoplasm of the cardiomyocyte by the sarcolemma, which is a fancy word for uh, the cell membrane when we're talking about a muscle cell. So whenever you talk about any type of muscle cell, whether it be a skeletal muscle cell, a cardiac muscle cell, or a smooth muscle cell, you can refer to the cell membrane as the sarcolemma. I believe sarco refers to like muscle. Lemma. <laughs> I only know what that means in maths. I don't know where, <laughs> what that word comes from. Okay, so then you have the sarcolemma continuing on here, and you have another one of these T-tubules. Okay, so you'll have loads of them. You won't just have four. You'll have many of them, and you'll have them on this side as well. So they'll invaginate in from this side. Okay, and I'm going to deliberately leave a space, because I need some space to actually draw something later on, so I won't put another one in there. And we'll have another one here, etc. Okay, so you'll have a huge number of these T-tubules, which are these invaginations of the cell membrane into the cytoplasm of the cell. So really, if you want to, if you're struggling to get intuition for this, imagine having a balloon and sticking your fingers into the balloon. The balloon's blown up. You stick your fingers into the balloon. The balloon surface represents the cell membrane, the sarcolemma, and your fingers projecting in uh, you're bending the balloon surface inwards, and that's very much so like what's happening here. That's the intuition that you should have for what these are. Okay, and their name is a T-tubule. So these are called T-tubules, and the reason they're called T-tubules is that this little T at the front here, this stands for transverse. Transverse is another name, well, is another word for perpendicular to. So, basically, the invagination, this tubule into, uh, deep, digging deep into the cytoplasm, this is transverse or orthogonal or perpendicular to the normal cell membrane, which is here, basically. So, you've got basically a 90 degrees angle there, which is why they're called transverse tubules, because they're at 90 degrees to the cell membrane. Okay, so, now, you only have these T-tubules in ventricular myocytes, which when people talk about cardiac muscle cell, they will really be talking about ventricular myocyte. Because if you go to certain animals, for instance, if you go to the turkey, uh, so you can do this experiment if you like, Christmas is coming, so you can do this experiment if your turkey still has its heart, when you're gutting it, you can do this experiment. Um, the turkey heart 
doesn't have atria and other other animals this is true as well of um, the turkey heart just has two ventricles and when you think about it why do you need the atria you can just have the superior and then the inferior vena cava coming into let's say the right ventricle and then the blood being pumped out then into the pulmonary trunk blood comes back from the lungs, goes into the left ventricle, and is pumped out into the aorta. It works perfectly well, so the atria are not really that essential. If, you, if things go wrong with the atria, then yes, it's very, very dangerous, because if you get atrial fibrillations, for instance, you can get blood clotting within the atria, and when blood clots, that can lead to strokes if the, if the blood clot is... Um, in, is um, moved up to the brain and blocks the arteries in the brain, then that will lead to stroke. So it's very, very dangerous if the atria don't function properly. But there are animals which don't have atria, and if you want to see that, if you don't believe me, uh, look at your turkey's heart this Christmas. Right, okay, so after that, uh, ventricular myocyte. So this is a ventricular myocyte because I've drawn it uh, with these T tubules. Now, if it was an atrial myocyte, atrial cardiomyocyte. In fact, it should be an, yeah, no, well, I've put the ventricular, so it's okay. I don't need to put ventricular cardiomyocyte. It's obvious when I put ventricular myocyte that I mean a muscle cell in the heart. Okay, if you have an atrial myocyte in contrast, so an atrial myocyte below, let's say. Okay, I'm not going to draw this as thick because I don't want to waste paper. But if we have our atrial myocyte here, it won't have the T tubules, okay? So here's our atrial myocyte. In fact, actually, the atrial myocyte might be the ideal place to draw the next structures on because it doesn't have the T-tubules getting in the way. Right, so the atrial myocyte doesn't have these T-tubules. Now, we've discussed the T-tubules. What other important structural features are there within cardiomyocytes? Well, there is the contractile machinery, the machinery that allows the cell to actually contract in length, which is obviously really important for its function. Now, if you look down the microscope, cardiac muscle is a type of striated muscle. So, cardiac muscle cells, both atrial and ventricular cardiac muscle cells, are what are known as striated muscle cells, i.e. they're like skeletal muscle rather than smooth muscle. Okay, and basically what you see is you see, if I um, draw a little picture of this, if you look down the microscope, what you'll see is you'll see bands where it's dark and then bands where it's light. So let me show this a bit more convincingly. So here you'll see a band where it's dark, then you'll see a band of lightness, then a band of darkness. This is really for, this is almost more like a skeletal muscle cell. It's more messy in cardiac muscle cell, but we'll, we'll go for it being like this. Okay, so you see bands of lightness and darkness, okay? Now these band, these dark bands here, so the dark bands are known as anisotropic bands. So it's an anisotropic band, or an A band. So this is the A band. Okay? And the light bands, the light bands here, those are known as isotropic bands. Isotropic bands, or I bands for short. So this is an I band. Right. Now, why? Why do you see these striations? Well, it's because all the contractile machinery within the uh, cardiomyocyte is, to an extent, lined up. It's not as lined up as it is in skeletal muscle cells, but it is, to an extent, lined up. So, basically, we need to now discuss what the contractile machinery is within these cardiomyocytes so that we can understand where these striations come from. So, basically, the contractile machinery is what is known as a sarcomere, okay? So a sarcomere, if we draw a sarcomere inside our cell, what it consists of is these uh, structures here known as Z-discs, okay? So this is a Z-disc, right? And I need somewhere really to draw this larger because it's going to be awfully small if we draw it here. We'll draw... Here, so basically, you might un, un, you might wonder why is it a Z disc when he's just drawn a line? Well, remember, even though I've drawn a box for our cardiac muscle cell, 
The cardiac muscle cell will actually be cylindrical. This is just a 2D section of it. It will actually be a, cylind a cylinder. And also, this little uh, line that I've drawn here will also be a little disc, basically, that will be in the same plane as um, a transverse section through the cardiomyocyte. So, basically, if I draw the cardiomyocyte in 3D here, so here is the cylindrical cardiomyocyte now drawn out here. Then we can see that there is an axis, an, a longitudinal axis of the uh, cardiomyocyte. I, here's one end and you go to the other end. Now, uh, there is therefore a plane that is perpendicular to that axis. So there's this axis going through the cylinder. And therefore there is a plane that is parallel to, sorry, perpendicular to that axis. Now these little discs will be in one of those planes that's perpendicular to the axis, to the longitudinal axis. So you've got these little discs of protein inside the cytoplasm of your uh, cardiomyocyte. And you've got two of them here, so here's another one. And these discs are known as Z-discs. And when you look at them just in 2D, when you just look at a 2D slice, they're just going to look like little lines. Now, suspended from these Z-discs, what you have are protein filaments known as actin protein filaments. So here are our actin protein filaments, suspended from our Z-discs. Okay, so let me color, add some color on this. So these here, in bright green, are the actin filaments. Okay, right. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.